We just got the last truck of the morning loaded. And then I'll we'll probably be having two or three come back this afternoon. But it's going to slow the truck drivers down a little bit. They got, uh, once you get up by, once you get an hour away from here, it starts getting into some hills and you get into some snow belt areas. And what that means is, is that snow coming off Lake Michigan over there. They get uh, pretty nasty weather over there, and then you get into some big hills, and they can get nasty. So they're going to be slowed down a little bit today. Um, I don't think it's supposed to get really horribly bad over there, but I know it's not fun. Once it gets slippery, it'll slow everything down. But these are my issues today I just come across. I've had a couple of these problems. They haven't been a big deal, but uh, the one just went out on me. And I'm going to have to make a order probably one of these days. Um, yep, got to figure stuff out. I'm starting to have a couple issues. Let me show you. I don't know why it looks like that. There we go. What I got going on is this. Get up here to my computer screen and I'll show you what we're dealing with. Come into focus there. Uh, there it goes. So if I scroll through, everything's fine through here. That's my chipper engine information. Um, that's my flail engine information. All that's fine, but here's where I get, I've had a couple issues here and I have, I've dealt with them probably for a year now and it hasn't given me no problems, but right here, it shows zero pressure there and zero pressure there. That's for my bottom feed wheel output and that's for my first yoke. Now what that means is this, the yoke that's right underneath the cab, the top one that's spinning, my transducer, which is way up there, I'll show you in a second, is bad. So it's not telling me the pressure of that feed wheel, which ain't a big deal. But the problem you have is this. If that locks up, I don't know it's locked up because there's no pressure. Now if that was to lock up, what happens is this shows like uh, 3,000 PSI and then it kicks, it, kicks the, it kicks the wood back out because it says there's a problem. Now the bottom feed wheel output is this. I've got two, I got two feed wheels before I get to the conveyor. So that means underneath me are two feed wheels on the bottom. And in between, uh, I'm sorry, there's three. Is there three? Two, there's two. And then there's three, I'm sorry, there's three on the other side of that conveyor. So they call that the input bottom feed wheels and that's the output bottom feed wheels and what I have is that same transducer for that one's out now I've replaced a couple transducers on this more bark did when it was under warranty so there's two of my little problems and here's my other big problem that just developed today it's not a big huge problem but it's nice to know um, see my rpm is here I don't got no RPMs on my third flail drum, okay? So I either got a wire loose over there because that's the that's the flail drum that's beyond that motor back in there. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. And what happened today was uh, my speed sensor was out on this drum too, which ain't a huge deal, but my my transducer went out for this one today. This, this flail drum's on. But I can't see anything. All I can see my is my percentage. So what I need to do is I need to get this straightened out, this straightened out, and then uh, get my transducer straightened out. Um, because I don't like not knowing, that, once again, this thing could be locked up and I not know it because I can't see my gauges. Um, so those are the couple things I want to get straightened out. Um, everything else is reading fine but those are my issues today and I'm gonna have to 
talk to somebody tonight and get in the book and order me some new parts. Um, everything else seems to be fine on my computer. But that's what I come across. That busted over 5,500 hours the other day. Um, I'll shut all this down. Kick out you. There we go. I got her kicked out. I replaced this panel. That one's replaced. This one, I use, uh, I've made some videos on it. Come here. Let's see here. I've done some videos on this one, uh, on these and some previous videos. Uh, I haven't done any since, but this is brand new and that's why all the colors work right. This one's green. That's not actually on. When you push it, it's supposed to turn green. And then you let off, it's supposed to turn red. But you can see that I got some that are wearing out. That's why this one's all good. This one, that's my flail drum. One, two, three. Flail engine up, flail engine down, chipper engine up, chipper engine down. And this is your feed wheels. So I'm using these a whole lot. That's why uh, those buttons are all falling off. So, that's just another simple deal. I'm not going to replace those until they go out. Them are extremely cheap. But, uh, so that's that. That's my computer issue. That's a Valentine's from the wife. Man, that's been here a long time. Uh, yeah. So we'll go down and we'll look at them. We'll look at the transducers. I'll show you where those are at. My speed sensor. Right in here. Oops. See all those things coming out the bottom there? Them are called by transducers. Them tell me. And what's nice is Morbark's got them all individually marked as to what they run. So when I go to, I'm going to test a couple of them, and you simply unplug the wires out of the bottom and swap them with a different wire, and see if a different wire will work with it. If a different wire works, then obviously it's not the transducer. you got a wire from somewhere to there bad. So you always want to test them first. But those are my transducers. That's the... All those lines going in up top are all a hydraulic, hydraulic, and that's all electrical lines run out the bottom. And those tell me what pressures I have for each individual function. And there's also test ports there; you can check everything. But uh, those are right under, right underneath the big radiator off the V12. And these right here are my speed sensors. Uh, that one's not working right and my first upper one's not working right too and what had happened was this one got ruined when the bearing went out on the other side of this and this spun up and hit the bottom of that speed sensor and busted it up a little bit see if you can see there and uh, yeah, it got nicked up just a little bit there. Hasn't worked since. That one works fine. She's She gets uh, the most stuff coming out at it all the time, but that seems to be the one that's fine. But it's not, it's not moving up and down all day long like these upper ones are. I don't know if that has something to do with it or not. But, so that's today's project. I'll, uh, I shouldn't even have to make a phone call because the higher powers above me will probably see this video and then they're going to be like oh we got to order that but it's not an absolute emergency but that first drum bothers me because i can't see what rpm i'm running at or anything so this is your the big v12 radiator they got this set up nice so that's what she looks like inside there uh Yep, nothing special, just a radiator. But what's nice is this one got a reverse fan on the back of it so I can kick all that stuff off from there. 
but yeah that whole transducer panel is right behind there so you got to crawl up into here to work on it up into there so that's what it looks like down in there this is kind of the belly of the beast here you get up in there you got your fuel filters and all that and the big clutch there and there's my hydraulic tank for my clutch there I just about time to change that fluid I see it's starting to get a little bit dark in there so once it starts to get dark instead of that nice clear looking I swap it out so that's just how I do that but that's a little video on what I got going on today they I gotta get some parts and then we'll make a video of changing all that stuff out but them transducers aren't fun to change out because you do get covered in oil once you pull once you pull that out of there, you get oil gushed on you, and then you gotta do it quick. That's the trick. Quick, quick hands, and then don't screw nothing up. But you don't want to do it when the oil's hot either. Which right now we're not gonna have a problem with that. So that's today's issues. No big issues, but now the snow's changing to a sleet. I gotta get some wood slashed up. I slashed some this morning, so. I set some logs aside there, some popple, one nice maple I set out. Might be able to get two nice maples out of there. So that's the chipper issues I got today. Nothing extreme, but just enough to, I need to get it fixed. I don't want them all going bad and need 20, 30, 20 of them or whatever, how many are underneath there. So get it straightened out. Gotta shut my powers off. Just shut it down, but now it's raining out. It is gonna be a slow ride home. But just another day in the woods. Can't beat it. I'd rather I'd rather be here than well, a lot of other places. I mean, I'd rather be with the family, but if I'd have to work, I don't know why. Um, all you other loggers out there know what I'm talking about. When they say you get sawdust in your blood, it don't go out. Well, that's a true saying. I'll tell you that much because I enjoy it out here and it's stinking and raining and snowing and sleeting and cold and I'm wet, soaked, but there goes Jimmy out there, but I enjoy it, so I guess I'm just goofy, it's nasty.